folks, Jim and Leela here for Geeking Out episode 171. Wow. Yeah, we've been... Yeah, boy. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time, but that's good. Yes. That's good. Uh, thank you all for at, tuning in. As, as always, thank you very much for always tuning in. We appreciate that. And in for just a couple weeks, we're going to hit 175. Yeah. That's some sort of landmark, I guess, right? I, I suppose, but... the big It's not like will... 200. Yeah, well, 200. I think we'll, I think we'll do what we always plan to do and do that gigantic <laughs> musical. Oh my goodness, yes. Because you but, all want to hear us sing our reviews, and I don't, I don't think they want to hear me sing the reviews, but uh, they probably want to hear you. Uh, it, it might not be entertaining either, folks, but we'll no, give it a go, no. probably. We'll probably give it a go, yes. Uh, so. I'm going to let Leah start off with a book I didn't think would come out. That's right. <laughs> Just last week, Jim said, that book will never come out, and it yeah. did this week. <laughs> I doubt number two will come uh, out. There you go. So this is Avenging Spider-Man number one by Zeb Wells and Joe Madureira. Maduria. You think that's how it is? Or ju ju just call him Joe Mad. Never, but okay. Everyone else does. All right. Sorry, so. Jim. All right, so in this one, Spider-Man and the Red Hulk take on a Moloid army during the New York Marathon and try to rescue Mayor J. Jonah Jameson in the process. When did J. Jonah become the mayor? That, that's back in Amazing Spider-Man. You had to keep uh, that. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this was a lot of fun, actually. I really um, like the idea for the series, which is to bring back sort of a team-up style book back. So every issue, Spider-Man's going to be teamed up with somebody from the Marvel Universe um, in the whole, in the whole classic team-up book sense, um, and it, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the script for this one was full of zingers, and there's lots of action, which Joe Mad brings to life expertly, um, and Spidey fans should like this. Um, let's, also... Let's just hope it gets released on time. Hopefully. Uh, now also, uh, you may have noticed that, uh, it comes with a free digital code, no extra cost for people. So you also, for your money, get a digital copy as well. Um, which is, you know, kind of cool, I guess, for, you know, the people yeah, who like the, the way things are going with comics right now. It's, but to have it included for the same price was very it's, interesting. It's a good Instead idea, of yeah. like, you know, how DC did the combo pack for Justice League and it was like a dollar more yeah, for their digital bit, copy, yeah. right? So it's interesting that Marvel would go this way, um, it, it, you know, and if you read their press about it, you know, there's a whole reason why. Um, you know, I, I thought it was okay and I still like having the physical copy in my hands, but it's cool to have the digital code too, kind of like your DVD extras stuff where you, you know, you buy the DVD and you get all that other stuff for free with it, you know. Which would be nice because no one likes to pay twice for the same thing. Exactly. So there, there you have it. Next up we have Rachel Rising number three from last week, written and drawn by Terry Moore. And in this one, the mystery deepens as Rachel finds out she can predict people's deaths and she comes face to face with herself as a tragedy unfolds that she predicted. Um, another fantastic book by Terry Moore. If you're not reading this one, what's wrong with you? Go out and buy it. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's black and white. Don't judge it on that. It's fantastic story, fantastic art. It's probably one of the best books on the shelves. Pick it up. You won't be regretting that decision. Okay, and this is the part of the show where Jim takes a long break because... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Um, this is a point one one-shot. This is from Marvel, and it features seven all-new stories that are supposed to set the stage for a big change in the Marvel Universe that's supposed to be coming our way in 2012. That's how it's built. Can I take a nap now? Or? Probably. I'll okay. try and go through this as quickly as we can, but, you know, giving you a good sense of the book here. So, in the first one, Behold the Watcher, this is by Ed Brubaker and Javier Polito, the Watcher's fortress is infiltrated by two unknown beings set on finding out what the Watcher knows and set a dangerous coup d'etat in motion. This was really cool. The first story is like the thread that keeps the entire book of um, stories going together, um, linking one to the other. So Brubaker did an excellent um, job doing that. Um, but I love him anyway, so I really have anything negative to say about him. Um, but I, I just thought it really tied the whole book together well. So in the second story, uh, Nova Harbinger by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis, Nova tries to save Terax and his home, but he's too late because the Phoenix Force is coming. Mm. That's right. 
Marvel fans, this probably isn't a surprise if you've been reading a lot of Marvel books lately, but the Phoenix Force is coming back and I can't wait. It should be awesome. Isn't this like the tenth time it's been back in the last, oh, five years? Yeah, <laughs> but hopefully, you know, it, it's going to be exciting again. I, I, I really like this. That, that, that is a hope, yeah. And, and it's going to, you know, put a rift between, you know, Scott and Emma. So that, you know, it's, to rock their little romance a bit and the way things are going, that'll make things interesting, right? Because we can't put people together and then just have them be happy forever. We have to give them obstacles. Obstacles like Jean Grey coming back. Right? Yes, and melting Scott's <laughs> face, as one of our viewers so aptly put. Uh, who knows? Maybe that will happen. Okay. If it does, I want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. Okay. So, um, in the third one, Age of Apocalypse, The Myth of Man by David Lapham and Roberto De La Torre. Uh, ah, me David Lapham. Yes. Fantastic writer. Yes. Well, this was really good. I really liked it. Um, mutant Kind has been pushed to the brink by mankind, or sorry, mutant kind has pushed mankind to the brink, but there are some who are still fighting for the human race. So it's interesting how the little twist on everything that we've been doing um, about the mutants, like them being sort of hunted to extinction, is kind of going in the opposite direction here, which is very interesting that there's a hint that the Marvel Universe is maybe going to swing the pendulum a bit. Um, there's lots of drama in this book, even though there's very little action. Um, like you said, Lapham does a great job of just keeping you mesmerized throughout the book, even though there's not like a lot of wow flash going on. I thought it was really excellent. And then in the fourth story, Scarlet Spider, The Spider Thread by Chris Yost and Ryan Stegman. Uh, Chris Yost is also a very good yes, writer. Yeah. Yes. Um, Kane is headed to Mexico to start a new, no new life now that he has a future to consider, but he's drawn into fighting bad guys once more, but this time he's trying to be a little bit more like Peter. So I loved this. Uh, if you're a fan of the Scarlet, Scarlet Spider, uh, it looks like he's going to be coming back in a big way, and that's kind of exciting. Uh, this was really well done by uh, Yost and Stegman. I actually really loved the art and the story. So if you are interested in Scarlet Spider, pick it up just for that. Um, then the fifth story, Cold Moon and Dragonfire, Yin and Yang. This is by Fred Benlente and Salvador La Roca. Uh, so in this one, it's a story of two twins that are sort of engineered to be weapons, but they're grown in like a robotic or mechanical womb, which is kind of weird. Um, and now Cold Moon and Dragonfire are out to bring down their makers, the mysterious corporation only known as Taji, uh, who has been supplying Ames weapons. So this is really interesting on how these two characters um, sort of came into being, and they have a lot of potential. Um, I think, and especially when they're sort of teaming them up with the Avengers um, to fight AIM, I thought it was kind of neat. So, you know, I, I don't know much about these characters if they've been around before or they're new for this, but I really liked this story. And um, next up we have Doctor Strange, The Shaman of Greenwich Village by Matt Fraction and Terry Dodson. So in this one, Strange tries to help uh, Joe, the madman of Greenwich Village, but the, the doctor stumbles upon something big. The impossible is everywhere now, he is told, and Strange must defend against the future. So this one was kind of weird, as in, I think most Doctor Strange books are. I'm not sure that I fully understood what was going on, but I'm pretty sure that that is maybe the point, that this is supposed to be one of the ultimate teasers of this book about what's going to happen, and I guess Doctor Strange is going to have a big part in whatever might happen. Um, but this was well done in, in any case. And then the last story, The Avengers Age of Ultron by Brian Michael Bendis and Brian Hitch, the Avengers are once again pitted against Ultron. This part was really short and sweet. It was literally like, I think, one page or two. And basically it all boils down to Ultron back, that's bad. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ultron back, bad. That's yeah, pretty bad. Um, so there's only a really, really little teaser for this one. Uh, but overall, I really like this book. Um, you know, for the five ninety nine price tag, there's a lot to find here. And, you know, there might be, there obviously is some really exciting stuff that's happening in the Marvel Universe in the new year. So worth picking up. And I'm a whole year older. Right. Thanks, <laughs> Leila. <laughs> Right. Next up, Route de Maison Rouge number six, written by Giuliano Gu Amani with art by Livia Pastore. Uh, and in this one, the mystery deepens as a house falls and all the girls plan to rescue Marina, but one betrays them and they fall into the mayor's trap. Now, as you guys know, I've been enjoying this series up until this point. Uh oh. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so Vincenzo left the book, so uh. the art suffers. Oh, okay. The art really suffers. Uh, story is still okay. I'm still enjoying the story, but when you change your artist out for someone else, the style just goes mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. Um, it's still nice art. It just 
isn't as good as Vincenzo's. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I can't really recommend it on that. But uh, if you're, you've been enjoying the series thus far, it's probably a good bet to pick up. Uh, but for me, it's just kind of a letdown because with Vincenzo's art, it was just great story, great art, really nice eye candy, but sadly that's lost with the new artist. So yeah, I can't really recommend it, but if you're a fan, check it out. I just didn't like it too much. <laughs> Okay, so next up, for the fan that actually commented about this book, uh, Magneto, Not a Hero, number one of four, by Scotty Young and Clay Mann. So in this one, the X-Men and the Avengers are shocked when a video of Magneto uh, killing a bunch of anti-mutant protesters appears. But Magneto claims it wasn't him, um, despite ample evidence to the contrary. So Magneto and Emma Frost use a new machine that he's created to track anyone who may have the same powers as him. Who would that be? His evil clone! Uh, uh, yeah. So X-Men fans probably won't be surprised at the end of this book or the big reveal, but it's awesome. And uh, it should be interesting to revisit this character again um, and watch, you know, Magneto being, you know, more Magneto-ish again. Because, you know, right now he's been fighting with the X-Men and doing the whole good guy thing. And so it, it'll be good to, you know, see that Magneto who's for mutant kind, no matter what the cost. Next up, we have Princeless, number one, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Mia Goodwin. And in this one, Adrian isn't your typical fairy tale princess. She's intent on not being locked up in the tower and waiting for Mr. Wright. So, she starts a quest with her dragon, Captor, <laughs> um, Sparks, to free all the other helpless uh, damsels, whether they like it or not. Huh. I love this book. I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Um, the only bad point I have to make about it is the print job. Oh, okay. Um, sadly, the printing is really off. And I mean, you can really tell mm -hmm. via the cover and the interior. But other than that, the story is fantastic. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'd actually say if you have a younger child around five to eight, it's mm -hmm. probably perfect for them. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. If you want to try something a, little, a lot different and a lot of fun, check this book out, please. It's simply fantastic. Okay, next up we've got Battle Scars, number one of six. This is by Chris Yost, Cullen Bunn, Matt Fraction, and Scott Eaton. So this is part of the Shadow he Shattered Heroes thing, which is sort of the follow-up to Fear Itself, or the fallout of it. Um, so after and then there will be another follow-up, yeah, another follow-up, another sure, follow-up. You know, follow so that big Marvel crossover, that one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyways... After Which one? Because there's so many. <laughs> there's a few. Um, so after surviving an attack in Af Afghanistan, Marcus Johnson returns home for his mother's funeral. The apparent victim of a homicide by looters, but Marcus suspects more. And what secrets does his past hold, and what do Taskmaster and Captain America know about it? Okay, so um, Marvel is promising that this character, uh, Marcus Johnson, if that's even his real name, will be significant and that, you know, this book will not, shouldn't be missed. Um, I can't vouch for that, but I can say that I enjoyed this book. Um, I haven't kept up on every fear book that's ever come out because, wow, if you've done that, then congrats to you. Um, you just wasted four hundred dollars. <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. saying it's a waste I, because I haven't read it all. But I thought that it really brought the themes, um, the thematic content that they were trying to drill home, really to the fore in this book, and I really liked it. It was really well done. So if this character is something important, then you won't want to miss this. Battle Scars, pick it up. And last and certainly not least is House of Night number one, written by PC Cast with Kristen Cast and art by Joelle Jones and Carl Kershaw. And in this one. Until recently, Zoe Redbird was an average high school student, but after she is marked by a vampire, she must enroll in the Vampire Academy House of Night and becomes and must become the leader of the Dark Daughters. Um, I'm confused <laughs> terribly about this book. Um, it's not a bad book. It's well written. It's well drawn. Um, it's just odd in that it takes place between a book one and book two of the book series that it's based on. Well, so that's I have good, though. In yeah, a way, it's good way. for people who are fans of the series. They get something a, new. But I've never read the books, so how the am I supposed to... The synopsis didn't help you? The synopsis helped a bit, but it doesn't make me actually care about the characters. Ah. I can't get to know a character if they're just thrown in my face. 
So this is perhaps more for fans of the If you're a fan series. of the series, then yeah, go right ahead and read it. But for an average reader who's just, just picking, it up. picking it up, they're going to be confused. They're not going to know what to judge this book on. Um, not everyone reads a novel that reads a comic. Yeah. So there is that. But if you want to try something a little different vampire-wise, yeah, check it out. But yeah, you're going to have to read the books first. Otherwise, you're going to be terribly confused like I am. We will see you next.